Venezuela's claim to the Essequibo region has raised a lot of questions, so I thought I'd try to answer some of them with a series of videos. First, let's get to know Guyana. To the north, the Atlantic coast stretches some 270 miles. To the east is our boundary with Suriname, the maritime boundary line settled in 2007 by the Permanent Court of Arbitration in The Hague. If we drive from the capital Georgetown some 450 miles inland, we'll find Brazil to the south and southwest. This boundary was settled way back in 1904 through arbitration, the King of Italy, Victor Emmanuel III, handing down the award. To the west, the source of the controversy, the boundary line with Venezuela. This boundary stretches for hundreds of miles. The communities on Guyana's side of the border with Venezuela are absolutely stunning, like this one, Parima, where I had a chance to visit recently. The Aracuna people live here, in fact, the only village of Aracunas, one of the nine indigenous nations of Guyana. In fact, the history of this country began with the indigenous people. The Arawaks and the Caribs are known to first inhabited the land we know as Guyana, setting foot here in the first millennium, roughly about the 1300s. Then came the Europeans. Catholic monarchs Queen Isabella I of Castile and King Ferdinand II of Spain sponsored a trip for the explorer and navigator Christopher Columbus. He set eyes on Guyana in 1498. Spain subsequently claimed the territory in around 1593, but they never quite got a foothold and would send patrols from time to time. We do see evidence of that Spanish claim in names such as the village of Santa Rosa in the Northwest District. But like I said, the Spanish didn't quite set up camp. Up came the Dutch, the people of the Netherlands. It had gained independence from Spain and was spreading its wings, doing well with trading. In 1616, the Dutch set up a trading post about 15 miles from the mouth of the Asukribo River. They later built fortifications like this one at Fort Island. The Dutch first came because they supposedly wanted to trade with the indigenous people, but that turned to acquisition of land as other colonial powers battled for territory elsewhere in the Caribbean. Five years after they first sailed into Guyana, the Dutch, in 1621, gave the Dutch West India Company control over the Esukribo's trading post. The company wanted more than the Esukribo. They set up a second colony, Berbice, in 1627. About 20 years later, the Dutch eventually gained sovereignty of the land we call Guyana after Spain and the Dutch Republic signed a peace treaty, ending their war that lasted 80 years. The county of Demerara, situated between Asukub and Berbice, was settled in 1741 and eventually became a separate colony. They continued uninterrupted for about 55 years until Great Britain sent in warships stationed in Barbados and snatched control of the colonies during hostilities with the French who had occupied the Dutch Republic, or the Netherlands. The French did have a short occupation of Guyana, what we now know as Starbrook Georgetown was established by them. But the British retained control and when they made up with the French in 1802, they handed the colonies back to the Dutch. But a year later, the colonies were seized by Great Britain again when hostilities with the French started again. That was during the time of the French Emperor and military commander, Napoleon. Once Napoleon was exiled around 1814, the leading nations of Europe got together to discuss a strategy to maintain peace. That process was called the Congress of Vienna. The colonies of Essequibo, Demerara and Berbice were handed to the British and they combined the colonies and began calling it British Guyana from 1831. But after agitation by the political leaders at the time, Dr. Chaddy Jagan and Ferb Spurnham, the British gave up the territory on May 26, 1966. Hence, Guyana became the world's 128th sovereign state in the world and the 57th country to gain independence after World War II. It then became the 23rd and only South American nation of the Commonwealth and on September 20, 1966, it became the 118th member of the United Nations. In my next video, I'll explain how the controversy over the western border arose and was settled.